We all have regular jobs. This is secondary. So we're not here at the station all the time. We respond to a call when, when we're toned out. You're doing it in conjunction with the rest of your life. So unlike a full-time firefighter that has hours of operations, you're pretty much 24 seven and you know making it work with your life. You've got a meeting, you get a call, you got to figure out can you get out of the meeting? Can you get out of work? Can you, you know, how severe is the call? I enjoy it. And somebody's got to get out of bed at two o'clock in the morning when somebody's having a bad time, right? Car accident, fire alarm, what have you. To raise funds for us as the firefighters, but also we, we purchased some equipment for the town with our funds to help out the taxpayers of the town. And as the breakfast comes only six months a year, it brings camaraderie within the members that do show up to help. And it's a, it's a good time. And meet local people and out-of-staters that come in that are second homeowners to show them what we do here. And so it's, it's a good time. Bill Biedemann, uh, second assistant chief, Manchester Fire Department. Yeah, this is my fourth department. Two in Pennsylvania, one in New Jersey, and I've been here in Vermont 15 years in the fire department here, 13. I'm Jamie Green, I'm the first assistant chief. I've been here going on 18 years. So, when I, I've always wanted to be a firefighter when I was a kid. I just enjoyed listening to the trucks go by and the sirens and stuff. And back in 07, I, I, I joined on here and you know, I just wanted to give back to the community. Oh, my name is Chris Towsley. I'm the fire chief of the Manchester Fire Department. When I first joined, I joined because my father was a member here. Andy Reed, and gosh, I don't know how long now. I think probably we're between 15 and 16, 17 years, somewhere in that range. The year I moved down into town, I pretty much got recruited onto the department. Uh, made the mistake of telling them that I was on another department, and yeah, from there it's history. Uh, my name's Keith Branch. I've only been here about mm, seven, eight months. We just moved up to the area. I'm just a black hat firefighter here now. Philip Grubborn. I was chief for 15 years, been on the department like 40, 43 years in May. My name is Luke Krieger and I've been here since July. So last year, I think around, around about the beginning of June, I was driving to work in Arlington and I was going down 313 and the car in front of me was fairly far ahead and they just got T-bones, somebody ran a stop sign. The second I got out of my car, I heard, I heard the, the screaming from the, from the other car. I sat with her while I was waiting for the first responders to come, talked to her, she was very upset, she was very bloodied. She had pretty significant injuries. Her car door, I couldn't get open. So I, you know, I remember after that accident, it's just, going to work and teaching and something just wasn't sitting right with me. And so when I was driving home that night, I drove by and I saw the sign that said, members needed will train. And that to me was sort of like, I'm, you know, that's the universe speaking to you and saying, you need to come and be a part of this. I don't know, you're gonna be a little bit crazy, I guess. I mean, you know, it's a lot of structure fires, I've run into a lot of burning buildings, and it, the adrenaline rush is just, it's for its for some people, not others. You know, you, you gotta, you see things that you don't normally see. You see people on their worst day, usually, and you've gotta be able to put that aside, handle it, handle your business, and do what you can to help that situation get better. It was just brutally cold. It never got above 10, 12 degrees all day long. And my cousin, Mark Roberts, we didn't have a lot. We had Bennington's aerial here, but we, they had a crane up there because it was under construction. And Mark and I grabbed a two inch line and crawled up on the end of a crane so we could get over the top of the fire. And by the time we got it knocked down, they had to come up and chip the ice off us because we couldn't move, we were frozen the ladder. And that was, it was probably five, 10 below zero. This was like four, uh, three o'clock in the morning, something like that. Some of the calls are very hard. Some are very easy. Unlike other professions, you can have the exact same call 
but the scenario when you're there is completely different than what you trained for or what, what you've wanted to do. When I first joined, we averaged like 225, somewhere in that range. During COVID year, we actually hit like 317, I think it was. So our breakfast we do from October through March every year. So it's our probably our second biggest fundraiser uh, other than our golf tournament every year. It allows the Fire Fire Association to purchase things like t-shirts for us or whatnot, but it also allows us to purchase items that don't get into the town budget, such as the Jaws of Life, which we spent $30,000 on. Jaws of Life are rescue tools that are used for accident calls, for taking doors off, taking roofs off cars. You got your spreaders, you got your cutters to free people from a a vehicle that are trapped and can't get out. We purchased a side-by-side, -side, a trailer, rescue gear, foul weather gear after Irene, because structural gear isn't meant to be out in the, you, you get your structural gear wet, you end up baking yourself in a fire. So we, we put a lot of extra effort into supplementing what we get from the town. We're always looking for members. Always looking, so come on over. It's a big struggle, it's a big struggle. Not only getting people in the door, but getting people in the door and getting people to show up. It's, it's, it's a lot to ask for during the day, at night, you know. Any Monday night, six o'clock. Yeah, we have, if we're not having a meeting, we're having training. Every Monday night, six, six o'clock, anybody can come in. Some guys have come in and didn't really want to join because they really weren't sure of the aspects of it all. So we give them tours, we let them sit in on our training, let them get the feel of everything, show them what we do. And others have just come right in and made out the application and joined right then. And you, you've you been at the fire department for 50 years, you said? Picture up there is like, wow. all our family. What? <laughs> oh my goodness.